Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to calculate an aircraft's weight and balance. It's extremely important before every flight that a pilot calculate an aircraft's weight and balance based on the items that are going to be in that aircraft in terms of uh, pilot and passengers and fuel and baggage, etc. Um, and it's also extremely important to calculate the center of gravity uh, to make sure that the aircraft's operating in its between its forward and aft CG limits. If the aircraft were to take off with a weight that exceeds its max takeoff weight, the aircraft's performance is going to be dramatically um, reduced and potentially very dangerous and could result in catastrophic uh, failures, such as a structural damage to the aircraft, a wing breaking off, etc. If the aircraft's center of gravity uh, calculation is determined to be outside its forward and aft limits, the aircraft will not um, fly properly. You may not be able to rotate to take off. Uh, you may not be able to flare on landing. And just during flight, uh, the performance and stability of the aircraft are going to be severely uh, limited and reduced to potentially very dangerous levels. So we're going to go ahead and present to you um, how to go about calculating a weight and balance and um, how to determine, based on your results of your, your calculation, if your aircraft is going to fly safely by looking at the weight versus CG envelope tables. All right, so how to calculate an aircraft's weight and balance. So why is an aircraft's weight and balance so important to us as pilots? Well, the weight and balance are key factors in the design, performance, and stability of an aircraft under various operating conditions. Balance is maintained through the center of gravity, or CG, whose location determines the aircraft's characteristics. The CG position is affected by the total weight and the distribution of it throughout the aircraft. Weight parameters ensure the wings and overall structure are able to support the aircraft throughout all flight envelopes. Prior to every flight, pilots must determine the weight and balance to ensure the aircraft is operating in accordance with the Pilot Operating Handbook, or POH. So weight compliance is critical for aircraft flight safety. Operating above the aircraft max weight limitation compromises structural integrity of an aircraft and adversely affects its, affects its performance. If um, the weight is too great, uh, the plane may, may not make it off the ground. Even if it does get off the ground, however, if there's any turbulence um, or any types of um, significant movements or position changes of the aircraft. It could structurally damage the aircraft in terms of bending metal or even worse, uh, breaking metal, uh, such as ripping off a wing, uh, losing part of the uh, tail section, etc. So that's why it's so important to make sure that the aircraft is not exceeding the max gross weight uh, before takeoff. Um, in addition, excess weight reduces the flight performance in almost every respect. Um, with higher weight requires higher takeoff speed, longer takeoff runs, reduced rate and angle of climb, lower maximum altitude, shorter range, um, it reduces cruising speed, reduces maneuverability of the aircraft, the aircraft will stall at a higher airspeed, uh, there'll be a higher approach and landing speed, and a longer landing roll. So in addition to potentially um, structurally damage the aircraft and have a catastrophic failure in flight, uh, you have all these performance characteristics that are uh, reduced by having excess weight. So in order to do a weight and balance, we need to go over the key definitions uh, in calculating weight and, weight and balance. The first is the datum. This is known as the imaginary vertical plane from which the horizontal distances are measured for aircraft weight and balance. And if we look here in this picture here, uh, let's get the pointer options up, laser pointer. The datum for this particular Cessna Skyhawk is at the firewall. Okay. So it's just an imaginary vertical plane that the, the manufacturing aircraft decided to use for referencing for doing all of its weight and balance calculations. Stations. Stations are locations along the airplane fuselage relative to the datum. A station may be where the pilot and front passenger sit. This, another station would be where the back passenger sit. Uh, another station would be the baggage area. And another station where the fuel is kept in the fuel tanks. Those are all known as stations. And then we have a moment arm. This is the horizontal distance from the datum point to the uh, center of gravity uh, for the particular um, item, such as the pilot and front passenger, the back passengers, the baggage, and the fuel. The moment is an item where the weight of a particular item is multiplied by its moment arm. In this example here, we have a station identified as 70, meaning 70 inches away from the datum. There is a 70-inch um, moment arm, and the weight at that point 
it looks like it's like in the baggage area here, is 10 pounds. To calculate the moment, we multiply the 70 inches times the 10 pounds and get 70 inch pounds for a moment calculation. The center of gravity uh, is a point at which the item would balance. So if we could take that aircraft and balance it on our finger uh, so it wouldn't tip forward or backwards, um, that would be the CG point of the aircraft based on the weight and the position of those weights uh, in the aircraft. There's also something known as the CG fore and aft limits, and you're, they're pointed out here. As long as the aircraft's center of gravity calculation um, determines that the CG is somewhere within its forward and aft limits, the aircraft will be able to be fl flown and maneuvered and uh, fly correctly through all of its normal envelope of operations. Um, however, if the CG is determined to be forward or aft a limit, we'll have negative consequences, and we'll discuss those in the next page. When we talk about item weights, we're talking about the basic empty weight of the plane, the pilot, the passengers, the fuel, and the baggage. And the basic empty weight of the plane is the standard empty weight of the plane plus all installed optional equipment, uh, minus any uh, usable fuel. In regards to the um, example we're going to do today, we're going to do it on a Piper Warrior II, and just highlighting here that the datum point out of the Pilot Operating Handbook uh, for the Piper Warrior is uh, the very tip of the um, spinner on the nose of the plane. So the datum point right here for the Piper Warrior is right here, versus at a firewall. So balance is also an extremely important part with it, or the center of gravity. Um, and it's important that we comply with the forward and aft CG limits to make sure the aircraft is safe for flight. So operating an aircraft outside the CG envelope limits control um, it, it will affect the aircraft's safety. So if we wind up doing a center of gravity calculation and find our CG is forward of the limits that I showed on the previous page, um, there are a lot of negative things highlighted in red, and there's one relatively green or positive thing. Um, the positive thing is the aircraft's more stable. In the event that the aircraft stalls, it's more easily able to recover from it. But that said, there's a lot of negatives uh, having a forward CG. Uh, you have a higher stall speed, meaning the aircraft will stall at a much higher airspeed than it's normally designed to stall at in level flight or in a um, non-bank turn. Uh, you'll have a slower cruise speed, so you'll have a higher angle of attack. Uh, you may have insufficient elevator nose to flare for a landing. You'll need greater elevator back pressure required to try to make that flare happen on a landing or even to climb out. You'll have poor climb performance and you're going to consume more fuel and time in route uh, with a forward CG. In regards to the center of gravity being located uh, further aft than it's supposed to be, that it's allowed to be, um, you have a lot of what appears to be good things highlighted in green and one red thing um, that's very dangerous. And I'm just going to start with the, the bad. So the less stable, meaning that this aircraft, if it does find itself into a stall situation, the chances of recovery are limited and most likely it'll result in a spin uh, that'll be very difficult to recover, particularly in a Piper Warrior, they're not designed to spin. So uh, that's a really negative aspect of having an um, aft CG that's um, located outside or beyond the aft limits of the aircraft. So you can see here, uh, there's a positive things having an aft CG. You have a lower stall speed, so the aircraft uh, will, slow, will stall at a much slower speed, um, and that'll be through due to a lower angle of attack. You'll have a higher cruise speed. You'll have, a, again, lower angle of attack. You'll have a faster speed, and you'll use less fuel and time. So in theory, this sounds all good, that you can use less fuel, you'll get there faster, um, requires um, a, a um, lower angle of attack, and the stall speed is much slower. But the problem is, if it does stall, your chances of getting out of the stall are, are very limited. So how do we go about calculating aircraft weight and balance? Well, first of all, you need the Pilot Operating Handbook um, to look at the POH's weight and balance tables. You'll need a calculator uh, to do some simple math. Um, or you can use a simple weight and loading balance form, which we'll show you here in a minute. You'll still need a, maybe a calculator or basically be capable of doing some simple addition, math, and division. And we're going to need to do a few or know about a few key formulas. One, we need to sum up the total weight of the loaded aircraft, simple addition. We need to calculate some moments. 
uh, based again on the item weight and the particular station moment arm. And then we need to determine the aircraft center gravity, which is taking the total sum of moments and divided by the, the total sum of weights that we added up. So again, how to calculate the aircraft's weight and balance. We're going to sum up all of um, the items in the aircraft, including the basic empty weight of the aircraft. So this includes the aircraft itself, the pilot and front passengers, the aft seat passengers, the baggage and fuel. Uh, well, then we're going to calculate the moment for each item using the weight and balance loading graph um, or just basically doing the, the multiplications out ourselves. So we're going to calculate the moment by multiplying the item weight times the station moment arm and again getting the center of gravity by taking the total sum of moments and divided by the total sum of weights. And then once we calculate all that, we just take the sum of the moments divided by sum of weights and we get our aircraft CG and we'll look to see if it fits, that point fits within the envelope um, in the pilot operating handbook for operating the aircraft so that we're ensure that we're within the forward and aft limit range um, for the CG. So this is a very simple table I put together. Uh, you see the items on the left, the basic empty weight of the aircraft, the pilot front passenger, the passengers themselves in the back seat, the fuel, uh, this usable fuel in the Piper Warrior II is 48 gallons, and baggage max capacity is 200 pounds. So if we look at the first row at the top here, we've got the weight in pounds, the arm half data point in inches. These numbers in black all come right out of the pilot operating handbook. You just have to pencil them in. Uh, similarly, the weight um, for the aircraft and the, the CG or arm for the basic empty weight of the airplane comes out of the POH or an, an, um, an update to it to reflect any additional equipment or changes in the overall weight in the CG of the basic empty weight of the plane. Um, the items, uh, then we have the moment in inch pounds. We basically they are multiplying the weight times the arm to get the inches pound. And then in some cases, it makes sense to divide that number by a thousand and um, use basically make this makes the math a little bit easier. So instead of 127,804, it's 127.804. Um, over here in red, these are the variables that we put in as pilots, the weight of the front passenger and the pilot, the weight of the pa passengers in the back. It could be just some a baggage, it could be a flight bag. Uh, the weight of the fuel, uh, there's six pounds per gallon for fuel uh, for half gas. And then the baggage, in this case, we use 20 pounds. So we were in full tanks and 20 pounds, 150 pound passenger in the uh, back seat and a couple, a pilot and, a, and another passenger in the front seat. So we do the simple multiplication here for each one of those. So 360 times 80.5 equals 28,980 divided by 1,000, 28.98. And we do this for all of the various items, uh, weight items in the aircraft. We then sum up all the weights, which equal 2,306 pounds. We sum up all the moments, which equal 204,715 pounds. And again, I summed up the moments uh, with the numbers divided by 1,000. Then we just take the total moments, 204,715 divided by 2306, and we get a center gravity calculation of 88.7 inches. So again, for notes here, values can be calculated by multiplying the weight times the arm, which is what we just did here, and then dividing by 1,000, or we can pull them from a loading graph table, which I'll show you an example on the next page. The red uh, items are things that the pilot in command uh, enters about the, the items that are going to be in the plane. The green is what's calculated. Um, we're doing this for the normal category. In a utility category application, there could be no luggage or rear passengers allowed if we're going to operate this aircraft in the utility range versus the normal range, and we'll show that in a moment. Um, so there are some balanced loading graphs that help make the mathematics a little bit easier. So you can, with a chart like this that's in the pod operating handbook, you can pick the weight of 360 pounds, come over to the pilot and front passenger, and come down here and determine the moment uh, for divided by 1,000 uh, for that particular weight for the pilot and front passenger. And you can do it for the back passengers, the fuel, and the baggage as well. So it makes the math a little bit easier. And again, there's loading lines, so again, for the pilot front passenger, the aft passengers, the fuel, and baggage. So once we calculate um, that center of gravity and the max gross weight, which I've kind of reiterated here, in this case, 2,306 pounds, 88.7 inches, 77 inches. We plot it um, on the weight versus CG envelope 
uh, table or chart or graph that you can find in the POH. And you'll notice here this is the normal category and then this is the utility category. Uh, we're going to just talk today about the normal category, but you can see the point sits within the envelope. And that's a good thing. Um, with the dot sitting here in the middle, uh, we know that uh, we're in the normal category uh, range, so the aircraft will be able to fly um, properly through all of its um, uh, necessary operations for takeoff, a climb, um, a cruise altitude, and, and a descent, and a normal flare for landing. Um, if the CG had been outside the envelope, on forward or, or aft of it, we'd have the appropriate types of concerns that I highlighted a few slides back. Um, last kind of comment here is there's common errors that typically show up when doing these calculations, basically improperly or incorrectly reading the information off the loading graph if you decide to use that versus doing the multiplication out for your moments. Um, simple math errors. And the intersection point, basically determine the intersection point of the weight and CG value on the uh, graph. Um, that, that we were just showing in the previous page. So that's how we calculate an aircraft's weight and balance. Um, in this particular example, I only did it for the takeoff condition. You should also do it for the landing condition as well. After an aircraft is flown for a period of time, it's consumed fuel. Uh, with less fuel in the aircraft, the center of gravity is going to change. Typically, in these smaller GA planes, as you lose the fuel, uh, your weight's going to go down and your center of gravity is going to move forward a little bit. Usually it's not going to go outside your envelope, but there's always that risk, particularly if it's in a, a different type of aircraft other than a PA-28, uh, Piper Warrior II here that we had. Um, it's also important to realize, too, if for some reason you had a heavier passage in the, in the back seat of the plane and a lighter person in the front seat of the plane decided to switch seats mid-flight, that will change your CG calculation. So you really want to do it for not just the takeoff condition, but also your landing condition to make sure the aircraft's indeed staying within the CG throughout takeoff, through landing of that flight. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.